And now it's my privilege to introduce the next speaker, which is Gregory Paul, and he sort of lived a childhood dream I at least had when I was small. Uh, looking at dinosaurs is always very fascinating. That's not, not the topic for today, but uh, the topic is religion, and uh, there's sort of a line there between evolution and religion. At least there's a, a schisma there. But uh, today's topic is religion, and the title is Religion Really Universal and Good? Uh, and that's the question that uh, Gregory Paul is trying to answer. The floor is your, Gregory. Looking forward to hear you. Yes. Thank you very much. And I'd really like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me here to Copenhagen. It's the first time I've been to this city. I uh, spent a few hours just wandering around the town last, um, yesterday after the, my flight arrived. Very enjoyable place in herds of bicycles. I've just never seen anything like that before. The United States being very car dominated, of course. Um, one thing I would like to second is Roy Brown's suggestion about putting together some sort of declaration, perhaps at this meeting or perhaps later on at another meeting. I think that's basically a good idea. Um, this is my website on religion. I also have one on dinosaurs you can look up too if you want to do that. And being interested in, in paleontology and evolution and religion is not unusual. Richard Dawkins, for example, is an example of that, and, and Thomas Huxley was. These things are related to one another. Now, I'm going to be giving a, a lot of information here, and um, so I'm going to be going things, through things fairly rapidly. So I'm just going to try to give an impression of a lot of items. So if you want to learn more about it, go to my website. Before I go any further, um, in case you hadn't heard, the Christian God has been dis disproved. It happened in Ohio this week. There's this giant statue outside of a church in the state. got hit by lightning and burned up. And obviously, if there is a real Christian God who controls nature, this could not have happened. So maybe Yahweh, the Jewish God, exists and didn't like this, or Allah, or whatever. Or of course, there's also the possibility there's no God at all. But I thought this was really funny. To get to the talk, the, a lot of the subject is going to be, because this is a conference on God and politics, is what's the best way to secularize nations? And one of the things I'm going to be trying to stress in this talk back, is that we really are getting a lot of new information. Uh, a lot of analysis has been done in the last few years that a lot of people aren't quite aware of yet. It's really starting to help us figure out um, what is going on with the religion and how to deal with it in terms of policy matters and so on. Now, of course, in the United States, we have the American Culture War. And I'm not going to go into the history of this at all, but uh, this the American Culture War of religion and uh, secularism goes back a long, long time into the 1800s. And it's been much more intense in the United States than in Europe in a lot of ways. Uh, the current expression is the uh, Tea Party movement. It's one of the, the major things that's going on, which is a very conservative right-wing movement in the United States. And a lot of it is related to conservative religion, conservative Christianity. Although it's also very inconsistent in a lot of ways. I'll talk about it later, later on about that. And there's a part of the battle is an ideological one um, with pundits on both sides coming up with opposite conclusions in many cases, Richard Dawkins, for example, for atheism and Ann Coulter for, for um, religion. And of course, the quality of the, of the ideas on the two sides is, is not equal at all. Richard Dawkins is, is working at a level of intellect far, far higher than Ann Coulter will ever think of. But one of the things I do want to, I'm going to be stressing here is that the ideological battle isn't the key point. It's an important part of it, but the real um, struggle between religion and secularism is not ideological. Now, in the United States, it is having a major impact, a fair amount of impact, the ideology. Um, and currently in the United States, the religious right is, has a, a pretty powerful, they have a pretty well-developed means for getting their information out there. Um, by best-selling books and by the Fox News Network, among other things, which is run by Rupert Murdoch, imported from, from Australia, I guess. Um, 
and the impact that they're having on American society is significant. There was a study that came out a few years ago, um, Atheist as Other, and in the United States, atheism is looked down upon much more than it is in Europe. Um, for example, Gallup poll data on the right shows that atheists, fewer Americans will, will vote for an atheist than for gays, for president of the United States, way below any major religious affiliation, or for blacks. Uh, there's also similar data for marriages. Most Americans won't want to marry uh, an atheist. And what's happened is, is over the years, for various reasons, atheism has, has come to be seen as outside the American norm, that if you're an atheist, you're not a true American. So the anti-atheist um, propaganda over the years has had its effect. And now this is a little note I published in Science Magazine um, just about half a year ago. And what happened was there was a, a large news article in Science Magazine, which is one of the leading science journals, about the research on religion and, and why people are religious. And it gave the usual explanations that perhaps it's genetically based, that there's neurological factors behind this. And this article really ticked me off because it failed to mention this large body of research that I've been participating in, and a number of other people showing that that's not really true, that religion is basically a socioeconomic phenomena. So science, I was quite pleased to actually ran this little um, note of mine. And here are some of the articles that I'll be talking about, and some of the contents. I published a paper on evolutionary psychology. I'll get into that later on. Tom Reese um, published another one in Journal of Religion and Society last year. Again, you can access these by going to my website. Uh, Phil Zuckerman um, did a paper, but it also, Phil Zuckerman did a book called Society Without God. How many people have seen this book, Society Without God? Okay, it was, he came here to, to Denmark and Sweden and did a long-term research study on atheism in Europe, which is pretty unique, and you, everybody who's interested in this should get that book and read it. Also very important, Sacred and Secular by uh, Pippa Norris and Ronald In Inglehart. Okay, here are some things that people tend to believe are true, not, not entirely, but these are some myths that have grown up over the years that I'm gonna be de debunking here. Religion is universal among humans, um, almost as universal as, as say, language. Humans are genetically hardwired to be religious or spiritual for social cohesion, such as a God gene or a God module in our brains. Humans are religious because of the fear of death, social community, excess pattern recognition, gullibility, searches for the, um, the mystery of life or, or, or truth, or memes, and so on. Um, how many people here think that fear of death is a major cause of religion? This is simply not true. And it's one of the things that we're really trying to work on. Uh, one reason that religious people often pr promote is humans are so prone to be religious because there really are one or more gods. It's natural for us to believe in a god that, because there is one. Um, religion and creationism are on the rise in, in America and the world. And that's an exaggerated belief. Uh, a very, very common belief that religious, the religious propaganda industry uses is that societies and individuals are better off the more religious that they are. And also, the American way, combining libertarian, which is Darwinian economics, and faith-based charity is the best way to societal success. success. In the United States, we have what's called American exceptionalism, which is the idea the United States is, is a unique country among the first world nations that we have the most godly nation, and we also have this capitalist system that's producing this uniquely successful society. Another common myth is that the American corporations are working with a religious right to establish a right-wing theocracy. And a number of books come out by liberals trying to, ad to advocate this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's the myth of the struggle between religion and secularism is largely an ideological battle in which the side with the best arguments and or public relations campaign will win. And also there's this idea going around that the aggressive new atheism, which is a term I don't like because new atheism actually arose in the 1800s, but I'm not gonna go into that. that the, the idea is the aggressive new atheism is harming the secular evolution cause, that people like Richard Dawkins and myself and others that were actually hurting the atheist cause. And this is the thing that will do more than anything else to secularize a country. Universal healthcare, and I'll get into why that is later on. In December, I was reading this article about the Hadza tribe of East Africa, that the last hunter-gatherers left. They're living pretty much the same way they did 30,000 years ago. And I didn't, I was just reading the article, and it starts talking about how these people don't believe in an afterlife. 
When you bury people, they just bury them. Um, they don't have much in the way of rituals. When they go out and hunt an animal, they just go out and kill it. They do um, believe that the sun is a god, but they don't worship it. It apparently comes up every day, so they don't worry about it. These people are basically about as religious as the French or Danes. They don't really have religion. And this is in the anthropological literature. I immediately checked it out. Um, and I just had not known this. And I, how many people knew about the Hadza? Just a few. I mean, this is a shocking thing that here we are in the 21st century, we still haven't really been looking into this to explore the, the implications of this. In that science article, that little note was the first time this ever been mentioned in the literature that the Hadza are non-religious. This kind of blows away the whole idea that religion is integral to humans, that it's something that developed in primitive peoples because the, you know, the, the, they didn't know what was going on and they're trying to explain things. But we have an example of a hunter gatherers who do not have religion. 